councillors are there to represent the views of their community. That's why councillors get elected, and that's why you know the, the things that they do are, are watched by their by their local constituents, if you like. I'm Paul Spooner, and I'm Deputy Mayor of Byron Shire Council. Um, in recent times, one of the key or big issues around the, the Byron Bay area has been um, coal seam gas, in fact, around the north coast of New South Wales. Um, and council took a position that it, um, it didn't want um, coal seam gas mining in the area. And then I, I, I looked at that and thought, well, OK, yes, we can have that position, but, but where's our you know, $70 million worth of investments that council has? Uh, where's that going to? What I was able to um, get accepted by the council um, and uh, successfully passed was that we have a third criteria, if you like. And that third criteria was that uh, if we're looking at two forms of investment uh, in financial institutions and they both have the same credit rating, they both have the same rate of return, then the one that we'll invest in will be the one that has the uh, better record, if you like, on environmental and socially responsible investments. In preparation for this, what I did was I talked to um, a councillor down in Newcastle who had moved a similar motion um, to see um, what he'd looked at, and that was quite helpful. Um, had to um, do, do, do my own sort of research on it, but now that people are, uh, are looking at this in, in various councils um, around the country, I think it's easier for people to be proposing this. So a part of the motion, what I also did was that they incorporate a report. We have a monthly financial report, so a part of what was asked for in that motion was that they give a monthly update on, on the use of that criteria for our investment. So it's a way of in, ensuring that we're looking at this um, on an ongoing basis. This is, this is the interesting thing about introducing these sort of criteria into uh, a council decision making. One of the things that uh, um, has become obvious is that we need a centralised source of information for councils to be able to identify the financial institutions that do tick the environmental and socially responsible box, if you like. At the moment that's not in play, uh, but uh, a part of my motion was to uh, support a recommendation to the uh, Department of Local Government to actually explore setting that up because I think that would be very useful for especially smaller councils because they're limited in terms of um, what sort of uh, financial advice they can get externally as compared to looking at these things individually. It's quite, you know, it would be time consuming for a, a, a council officer to be checking out, you know, where NAB has all of its investments, for example, um, as compared to, um, you know, having a register that's uh, publicly available for councils to have a look at. So look, there is, a, there is concern in this area that, that climate change is a key factor for coming generations. Um, we're, we're seeing concerns around sea level rising. Um, we, we live in a coastal area. So the impacts of where we put our investments in terms of energy use especially, and the impact that that has on our environment, is a key consideration. And so the quicker we get out of coal-based economies um, and more into renewable based economies in terms of our energy consumption is the better for our planet and the better for, for our future generations. So I think that that is something that uh, government bodies all around the country need to be on board with. That certainly uh, in my area is a concern for our community. So it fits very well for us to be considering where our money is going, whether it's supporting a continuation of, of carbon-based um, energy sit, uh, you know, usage or whether we're going into the more renewable um, field. So I, I think most people would support that.